Hello and welcome again to Inside Earthster, our series of short monthly videos in which we share with you updates about our product and how we're embedding LCA science into it. During the last month, we've been focusing a lot on uh, one very specific aspect of customer feedback, which is traits of cycles, of life cycles of products that we can embed into Earthster. And that shows very much in how you create new product life cycles. This is how the screen looks like uh, looks like right now. And you may see some similarities. For the sake of the example, I'm gonna model electricity. And uh, those these are similar parts. You can still put the name, the geography, and then the template with the difference that now when you click on the template, it shows, it loads directly in the background, the, the effect of the template. So I could go around, if I have several alternatives, I could look around and see what type of data I have for each one of them. Uh, but then the major novelties are the, the next two things. One of them is the scope. We, we got the feedback that sometimes people want to model, especially suppliers that, you, that want to share their information with their own customers. They, they want to model the product up until their own customer or even up until their own gate. They, they may not be responsible for the distribution. So they say they have very good quality data for that part but they don't really have data for the rest. So it would just be a wild guess that they don't expect their customers to use anyways. Uh, so they want to be able to signal that. So now we've had, we've made it so that you can choose either cradle to gate. It's just your own data up until your own gate. It's cradle to customer. So it's when it gets to your customer. So you, you own the logistics. So you know about the logistics and you can include it. Or you do a typical cradle to gate analysis that includes all stages of the life cycle. For consumer products, it would, this would be the best scenario. And then the next big thing that we've added is the the scale of the cycle now those of you well versed in lca will will recognize here in particular the term functional unit and iso bundles many of these concepts that i'm going to talk about as part of a functional unit uh, so i sometimes joke the less functional or more functional of functional units uh, because often when people get told to to set a functional unit for their cycle they they go for production units or, or economic units rather than, than purely functional ones. Functional unit is how you measure how much of your cycle you're going to put together. It's not the same to, to do an, a life cycle assessment for, for one kilowatt hour or for a power plant or for a fraction of the power plant in the case of electricity that I'm doing now. Uh, so uh, you have to put some units in particular to make it comparable. If I compare two types of energy, I want to compare something that I can exchange. So I want to compare kilowatt hour in particular. Uh, I don't want to compare one power plant with another power plant if one of them produces much more electricity. Uh, that also works with products. If I, I'm comparing two printers, for example, I don't want to compare just two printers. And I'll get to in, in a moment into how do we solve the issue with printers. One unit that we tend to have readily available is the, the production. Like how much am I producing? And in this case in particular, I'm going to put, for example, uh, kilowatt hour, because that's a common um, common unit that I can use for, uh, for electricity. Uh, if I would be doing a printer, I could say how many printers I produce per day or per year, or I could say one printer if I have the data for that. Typically, we have data for this type of uh, unit. So it's good to acknowledge this unit, and it's a type of functional unit in a way. Uh, then one that's very convenient is economic units. Uh, so the value of that amount, and now I'm going to put, I don't know, and, uh, $150. And you can see that it calculates the price for me to double check. Is, is this really the, the value? And then it asks me, what does your product do? Because that's where the functional unit really shines. Now, if, if we go back to the example that I gave of the printer, then you don't want to compare two printers. You could start with a comparison like that, but then if one of them lasts for longer or says, well, you can use it in an office and you can print many more pages, it's quite unfair to compare those two as if they were equal. Because what you care about is not having a printer lying on your table. You care about having pages printed. That's the reason why you get a printer. So, so in that case, what you want to do is know for a given printer, how much of that function, how many of those pages, uh, and that's not a unit, that's not a unit of your production. You're not producing pages, you're producing printers, but it's a unit of the function. Now, when you ask people about functional units, this is a difficult, this is a tricky part of LCA. And one thing that we've seen is that if you ask people to write down what the product does, 
uh, so people who do LCA find this very easy, but people who, who don't, it's a difficult process. So you write down first what it does, and then you think, how would I measure that? In which ways can I measure that? Uh, then you type it here, and then you write it down uh, over here. So you may end up, we, we, we populate it by default by examples with a year or so many uses of the product. Those are generic, but you could substitute, like in your case of the printer, you could substitute it with 5,000 pages printed. And, uh, and then you have a functional unit. Uh, in our case, because the, the production amount, the, we are producing electricity, so our, our output is really electricity. The function depends on who's consuming it, but we don't know yet. Then we can also get rid of these and we can add as many as we want. Uh, for a given product, all the numbers that you put here are equivalent. So one printer gives you 5,000 pages for a given product, but that's not always true for two different products. Not all printers will give you the 5,000 pages that I that I put there or cost the same. So then you have different units that, you're, that your users or your customers or their customers or people finding your data can use in order to compare your product. And then you can use the, you can use the numbers that work best for you in order to make your best comparisons. And then once we've done all that, we can click on create cycle and this part behaves pretty much like you like you saw before. It loads the, the cycle, it calculates in the background the, the values, and here we go, we could start editing. Now, one thing that you might notice, there's a few things that are different. I'll, I'll focus on one of them, is this part on the side. Apart from editing the settings that we, we just defined, we have another icon, the notes. And this is because we have uh, we have little bits of notes everywhere. So every time you add a process, every time you get something from the database, you can document that. But some of the comments, you want to document at cycle level and you want to have access no matter how deep in the tree you are. No matter whether you're in a sub-process of a sub-process of a sub-process, you want to have some notes uh, there. Like, for example, what conversion units are you using or, or what assumptions have you made? So I could write here, for example, Distribution assumed to be 10% of consumption. And I have it documented there. When I export results, it will be there. Whenever I, I want to, whenever I'm wondering what, what did I set there, then I can go there and, and, um, and find my own data and find my, my own comments. So this is your scratch pad, but it, uh, it serves a function of, uh, of several ideas that ISO has embedded. Uh, like reference flow, for example. Here's where you could document your reference flows so that you can go back and forth and see whether it fits or not with uh, with your model and whether the changes that you're making make, uh, make sense to you. Um, then another thing that I'm going to show you a sneak peek is comparisons. You see this button here that says compare. And that's because we've started with this. So what you're going to see is very, very incomplete yet, uh, but it's the beginning uh, of the functionality to be able to compare two cycles. And uh, because we never like to start with a blank sheet of paper, when you click on compare, it loads immediately a comparison between my current cycle and the template that I loaded, which means the average for its industry, in this case, the average for electricity. So the moment, in this case, they look the same because I haven't really edited it, but the moment that I start changing it, I can always come to this comparison and see whether I'm doing better or worse than the average and by how much. And I can also see in which stages the, the biggest impact is, and of course, clicking on them takes me back to the cycle and I can I can dig deeper at any time. And that's it for, for this month's Inside Earthster. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, uh, you, uh, you're most welcome to comment down below if you're on YouTube or find us on any social media. We're very keen to hear from you because we see this as a community effort. We're, we're building the biggest, to get, the biggest database of environmental product information and we want to do it together with you. So, uh, so we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear from you how you see Erster fit into your, your workflow. What would, uh, what would it have to have to fit into your workflow? What does it have that you really, really want already right now? Or, or even if you're just excited and you, you want to be part of the beta when we, when we start in July. So feel free to contact us. We'll, uh, we're eager to hear from you. Comment here or, or on any of the social media. And I'll see you and hear from you latest in a month in the next Inside Earth. In the meanwhile, have an excellent day. Talk to you later. Cheers.